ahead and develop as much as possible. You gotta like the sound of freedom. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Look at our flight line today. We are 10 years in advance of where the fleet will be. Operating different types of aircraft simultaneously, manned and unmanned, on the ramps, out of the same hangars, using the same facilities. This is what you will see at any Naval, Navy or Marine Corps base in, within the next uh, day. This is number day seven in the, uh, the PEO job. As the PEO, uh, we focus ourselves on a vision, a vision uh, to provide our joint naval and coalition warfighters that lethal, interoperable, and affordable unmanned aviation and strike weapons capabilities today and as Admiral Marr uh, mentioned, into the future. We are the stewards of the future. And uh, we uh, ship the air vehicles here to Patuxent River uh, for a very specific reason. It's because there are only two places in the world where we do catapult and arresting gear work uh, for the United States Navy. Um, and as you go over to the, uh, the Naval Aviation, uh, Naval Air Ship Int Integration Facility, you will see um, the, our uh, TC-7 catapult and our Mark 7 arresting gear. It's, I think it's important to see the air vehicle itself and to get an idea of the size and the, uh, the complexity of this air vehicle. And we've been working um, here for uh, about the last eight months um, since uh, Air Vehicle 1 arrived. And uh, so we uh, completed Block 1 envelope expansion. Uh, we moved the Air Vehicle um, here, and I know that was in the news uh, uh, recently. Uh, completed electromagnetic camp compatibility testing on the aircraft. Um, and the, uh, the, the aircraft uh, did very well. Uh, we we um, uh, have pre been preparing the aircraft uh, since it arrived here um, to fly. And so at 11 o'clock on uh, Sunday morning, um, we got uh, this vehicle, uh, Air Vehicle 2, uh, side number 502 Airborne here at Patuxent River. Um, and for folks that have not seen it, uh, there's some uh, YouTube video out there and there's uh, plenty of information out. Uh, 35 minute planned flight, uh, one of the uh, uh, really uh, uh, unique and interesting things about this vehicle is when uh, you send it out for a test flight um, for 35 minutes, it comes back at 35 minutes after the hour. And the team, uh, we had planned to, uh, to do two test flights. Um, we accomplished all of the objectives on the first flight, um, so uh, we're, we're continuing to be very efficient um, in our the flight test. have we uh, have we tested to ensure that this cannot be spoofed? Uh, currently, this is a very closely controlled demonstration aircraft. Um, so, so we are um, there, and there are um, some challenges out there for operational systems. And we're really uh, we're focusing on uh, the uh, some of the basics of operating around the aircraft carrier. And uh, we're not looking at uh, some of those uh, more in depth, um, like information assurance. DOD GE, uh, welcome to uh, where the magic really happens for the X 47. So, as you've seen from pictures, the flight deck of the aircraft carrier is a very complex place uh, where distance is measured in inches and time is measured in seconds. What we had to do to get an unmanned aircraft to operate in that area is take the entire aircraft carrier and digitize it so that we could get that situational awareness that we can blend that unmanned aircraft into the manned operations without disrupting that critical flow. What you see right here, we're in a room that recreates the Carrier Air Traffic Control Center where air traffic controllers sequence in the aircraft to allow them to land on the, the carrier.